In this video, we will see an example of how the bubble chart can be an effective data analysis and data visualization technique. And then I will walk through four types of analysis that we can do with bubble charts. Here is a simple data set, a small simple data set, where we have six different products. For each product, how much marketing expenses did we have? and also how much sales those products brought in and how much profit they made for the company for each product. So now with this data, if we are asked to actually explain the relationship between the expenses and the sales or expenses and the profit or all three together, how can we do that effectively and quickly? Let's say I have created a visual just like this, and this is a bubble chart. Now, I can see that I have plotted the marketing expenses on the x-axis and the sales amount on the y-axis, and I can see that there is a, a relationship. So the bubbles are these, uh, the, each bubble is representing a different product, and I can see that the bubbles are along the diagonal, which means as the marketing expenses increase, we observe an increase in the sales amount. So that is a very clear relationship that we can see in the data by plotting the data in such a chart instead of looking at a table like this. We can also see how different each product is compared to the other by looking at the distribution or the spatial location of those bubbles. On top of that, we can see that the size of the bubble represents the profit. So for example, this bubble B represents that the product B has a profit of $25,000 and then it's located somewhere here around between $12,000 and $14,000 of marketing expenses and it's brought in a sales amount of somewhere around $120,000. So I can infer not only for one bubble or one product, but I can also look at relatively where it is compared to another specific product. And these type of insights can be quickly obtained by looking at the data visually compared to looking at a table. So now hopefully this explains how the bubble chart can be an effective way of displaying data whenever we are interested in looking at the relationship between three different quantitative variables. Now, before I go forward into the types of analysis that we can do with a bubble chart, I want to clarify the difference between a bubble chart and a scatter plot. There is a lot of similarity between the two, and the main difference between the two is how many quantitative variables are we analyzing the relationship between. So the bubble chart we can use three different quantitative variables and analyze the relationships. But on the scatter plot, we would do it with two. And that's the main difference. So a lot of the things that we will be talking about in this video from now on, most of them do apply to the scatter plot as well. So now let's go with the first type of analysis that we can do. First is correlation. Correlation is nothing but measuring the relationship between two quantitative variables. And I've used the scatter plots here because again, we're dealing with only two at this time. And so the, there are three aspects to a correlation. So one is the direction of the correlation. So let's use the example on the left. We see that as the marketing expenses increase, we observe an increase in the sales amount also because these dots are along a diagonal line. And so I would consider this as a positive correlation because when this increases, the y-axis or the quantitative variable sales amount also increases. On the right side, we have a, a different data set where we have the altitude. Um, so the higher the altitude, the temperature seems to be decreasing, right? So the temperature goes down as the altitude goes up. So essentially, this is a negative correlation. So the correlation can be positive or negative. So this is the first aspect. The second aspect when it comes to correlation is the strength. So I've, I've given three examples here. So on the left, this is, I'm calling this as a 
perfect correlation because you can see that all the data points lie exactly on the line. Um, so just let me clarify what this line is. So this line is called a trend line. This can be added in Excel or other you know, software. Whenever we are doing a scatter plot, we could use a trend line on top of that. And this trend line is trying to fit a line to the data points as best as it can. And in this case, it was very, very perfect because all the dots can be joined with a single line. And this is a perfect correlation. And if you look at the one at the bottom here, some of the dots can fall on the line, some of them are not, but they're still not too far away from the line. For example, Brian here, his specific dot here doesn't fall on the line, but it's still close. Similarly, Charles is below the line, not exactly on the line. And so this, I would call it as a strong correlation. And on the right side, on the top here, we have an example of a weak correlation because you can see that the dot B is so far away from the line. Uh, the dot A is away, dot E is away. So a lot more points are further away from the line and they're also very far away in this case also. So the point here is that the correlation can be if it's exactly on the line, it's perfect. If it's close, it's strong. If it is further away, then it's weak. Now let's talk about the third and final aspect of correlation, which is the shape. In the previous slides, I talked only about a line um, and drawing a trend line as a linear line, but there are also other types of relationships. So uh, another one, which is more common is exponential. There are other things like polygonal power and other types of trend lines can also be drawn, but I'm going to keep that as a topic for a separate video. I'm not going to go into in depth into those, but what I want to clarify here is that the correlation doesn't have to be only linear or a line. It can be different shapes or curves. And finally, at the bottom left, I have a note here to remind me to say it is important to understand that correlation doesn't mean causation. And just because you're observing that there is a strong correlation between two variables, we should not jump into the conclusion that one variable causes the other. So having said that, let's move on to the second type of analysis that we can do, which is exploratory data analysis. If you are new to the data, if this is the first time you're looking at this data um, and you may not know anything about how the data is distributed, you know, how many products are there, how different the products are, and you know, how different is product A from B. So we don't know anything. So just visually looking at the data without having to think about the strength of the relationship or anything, just want to get a feel for the data, this type of chart can be very helpful. Now for the next type of analysis, it's an extension of exploratory data analysis, but it, it's a specific type. For example, we are trying to find patterns and identify clusters of uh, elements or items in the data. So for example, here I have a bubble chart where each bubble represents a different country in North America um, for 19, in 1961. And the x-axis represents the fertility rate. So how many children on average per woman? And um, on the y-axis, we have the life expectancy, it's how many years on, on an average person will live up to. What I've done here is just drawn two lines and created quadrants, and now I can, I can label these quadrants. For example, on the top left, we have higher life expectancy and smaller family area. And then on the top right, we have high life expectancy and larger family, more than four children per woman. And then here on the bottom right, we have lower life expectancy and larger family. And then on the bottom left, we have low life expectancy and smaller family. So essentially, I'm putting them into different sections or areas, and I can now visually see which country is in which quadrant. So in this example, in 1961, United States and Canada are here, and then uh, many countries are in the bottom right section and some in the top right. And as we see in later years or you know, 
30, 40 years later, we will see that all the countries will be moving towards the higher life expectancy and smaller family. I'll be doing a separate video on that. I'll put a link to that as well. And the bottom line here is we can visually see how the different items or bubbles are clustering or forming patterns. And that's a very effective way of visualizing and also presenting this to your audience. Fourth and final type of analysis that I would recommend is to test the impact of a categorical variable. So in the previous um, analysis example, we were trying to find the categories or clusters from the data itself. Here in this fourth analysis type, we already have a category, predefined category, and we want to know the effect of that on the data. So in this, um, we are using continent as that predefined categorization. The red one is North America, and then we have um, the dark blue is Europe, and yellow is Africa, green is Asia, and so on. So what's happening here is when I have the continent colored, um, I can now see that Europe, for example, most of the European countries are in the top left of this chart, whereas the green Asia and yellow Africa countries here are more in the bottom right. So we can start seeing some patterns using the predefined category we had. So this again becomes very, very quick and effective way of analyzing the data. So these are the four specific types of analysis that you could do effectively and efficiently with a bubble chart. So you can do correlation, you can do exploratory data analysis just to get started with the data. You can analyze and find clusters or patterns within the data. You can also use your own predefined category and analyze it and see if that has any relationship with the three quantitative variables we already had. If you have any suggestions or if you have other types of analysis that you think would be better to be done with the bubble chart, please post them in the comments below. And if you would like to see more videos on data visualization in Excel, please visit inzara.com. I will provide all the links in the video description below. I'll see you all in the next video soon. Thank you very much for watching.